There's a train of coming You don't need no baggage Just get on board All children of God are by destiny children of exploits Designed to thrive where others fail To conquer the obstacles others fear And to do the impossible But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you You'll need faith to make it a reality Faith Moments brought to you by Patrick Penu Ministries would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Penu. Now in chapter 13 of John, chapter 13 of John, we see in the 21st verse where Jesus had announced Judas to be the betrayer of he, Jesus. And we see that when Jesus had said those things to them, that Bible says that he was troubled in his spirit. Are you listening to me? Well, I'm talking to you today about your belief in him. We are going to see today that Jesus had to almost convince his disciples of who he was. Now, I, I believe sometimes you... You get to a place of your Christian life and then you wonder if what you are believing, you believe what you are believing. <laughs> if you believe what you are believing because you don't seem to see what you expect to see. I have believed in God all this while. I've been praying all this while. I've been giving all this while. I've been fasting all this while. I've been doing all that I'm supposed to do, yet I'm not seeing anything. Am I believing what I am believing? And I believe that we will see that you are not the only one who have come to such a place because the disciples of Jesus came to the place of asking questions indicating whether they are believing what they have seen Jesus do or even if they really believe the ministry of Jesus. Are you listening to me? And so just follow in two and let's go a step at a time to see if you can find yourself in this situation as well. Are you listening? All right. Now, Jesus had announced that Judas would betray him. And uh, if we read, starting from the 26th uh, verse, watch this. The 26th verse, it says, Jesus answered them and said, because they had, Peter had asked him that who is the one that will betray you? And Jesus answered and said, it is he whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, Satan, Bible says, entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what do you do? Do quickly. Verse 28. But no one at the table knew what Jesus meant or what reason he said this to him, to Judas. For some thought, because Judas had the money box, Judas was pretty much the financial secretary, the minister of finance, if you will, and that Jesus had said to him, buy those things we need for the feast, okay? Or that he should give something to the poor, okay? Now, verse 30 says, having received the piece of bread, he went out immediately, and it was night. It was a night time that Judas left the scene and went out. Verse 31 says, So when he had gone out, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him immediately. Now, if that doesn't sound confusing or strange to you, I don't know. Amen. Go back and read that thing. All right, verse 33. Little children, I shall be with you. Jesus is speaking here. I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give you. A new commandment. That you love one another. That is a new commandment Jesus gave. Love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. So if you want people to know you are a Christian, you need to demonstrate that attitude of love. Are you listening to me? That attitude of love. That's the basic and the simplicity of what Jesus says. You, you don't need to be putting on any 
you know, straight face and letting people know you are you are a Christian and you're a believer born again and all that. If you are a believer of Christ, just show your love to one another and all will know that. Amen. That's it. Okay. Now come to verse 38. Jesus now foretells that Peter will deny him. Okay. We see in verse 20 when Jesus mentioned that Judas will betray him. Now Jesus comes to the area or the, the point where he's now telling about the denial of Peter. Judas has received his. Now is the turn of Peter. Peter is going to deny him. And we read from verse 36. Okay, verse 36, yes. Now Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Remember, Jesus says he's going somewhere and all that where he will be, blah, blah, blah. And then Simon Peter asked him, where are you going? Jesus answered him and said, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward or you shall follow me later. And Peter said to, said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Oh, I love Peter. Jesus answered him and said, you will lay down your life for me, for my sake? Are you sure? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Are you listening? That's Peter. Peter is also getting his portion of what Jesus was saying. Everybody, Judas has received his. Peter has now received his also. Now it comes to look at chapter 14. Let's look at chapter 14 of John. John the 14th chapter. Now Jesus is saying something here. He's comforting the disciples because of what is, is going on. Jesus, you're talking about somebody's betraying you. He's going to betray you among them. And now you are saying you are going to go somewhere that, you know, uh, the people, they will follow you later. And Peter is saying that, Jesus, I am going to go with you. I, I can even lay my life down for you and say, Peter, you are also going to deny me. Now you can imagine that the atmosphere of, of quietness and, you know, what was going through their minds. Chapter 14 says, now Jesus is saying here, let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because he has seen that the people are troubled of what he's saying. What is going on here? There's something going on we need to understand. You believe in God, believe in me also. Verse 2, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now he's saying, he's trying to calm them down. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be there also. Are you seeing that? He's, he's trying to calm them down because he has said two things that is cause a confusion in the minds and some, some level of sadness. Some, he, Jesus has changed the atmosphere with his disciples because here is a, a situation that they're preparing, you know, for the feast, for the feast. Now, Jesus come and say these things. Now, watch this. Where I am, where verse 4 says, where and where I go, you know. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, Jesus, what are you talking about? Where I go, you know, and the way you know. These people don't know. Now, it comes to the turn of Thomas. Now, we all know about Thomas already, that Thomas did not believe Jesus even after he had died and resurrected. Thomas did not believe Jesus. Beloved, I'm telling you today that there were doubts in the minds of the disciples of Jesus even to the point of death. So, so we see that now it's the turn of Thomas. Judas have received his. Peter has received his. Now Thomas. Verse 5 says, chapter 14 of John. Now Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. Now remember, chapter 14, verse 4 says, Jesus says, and where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Telling the disciples, oh, you know where I'm going. And, and you know the way where I'm going. Now, Thomas is saying to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. We do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? We don't know where you are going. You are saying, where I go, you know, and you know the way. And Thomas is saying, no, we don't. We don't know where you are going. And we don't even know the way. Verse 6, Jesus answered Thomas and said, I am the way. <laughs> I am the way. 
the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you, if you had known me, you will have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and you have seen him. Wait a minute, Jesus, are you telling me that all this while you are saying that the disciples didn't know you? Well, obviously, because Thomas is saying, Jesus, we don't know where you're going. Even though you said, you know where I'm going and you even know the way. And Thomas is saying, Jesus, I don't, we don't know where you are going. He didn't say, I don't know where you are going. He says, we don't know where you are going. There's something going on here. There's something going on here. And when I, I try to put myself in that atmosphere, it's like, wait a minute. We've left all this thing. See, no wonder Peter said to Jesus that we have left everything to follow you. We've left our houses, our business, our husbands, our wives, our houses, our money, everything to follow you. And then Jesus turned around and said to Peter, Peter, let me tell you something. No one has left all these things you mentioned to for the sake of the gospel and not get a hundredfold return in this lifetime and even the life to come. No one. Beloved, I want you to understand that as much as the disciples may or might have not understood Jesus, sometimes I believe, sometimes we find ourselves in situations in our Christian walk that we don't really know what's going on. I, I, are you with me? Or maybe I'm the only one who have found myself in that area. In the past 20 something years of preaching the gospel, sometimes I asked, Lord, are you really there? Because it comes to a place where God is quiet. He's not even saying nothing. And it makes you wonder, beloved, it makes you wonder that, wait a minute, am I on the right track? Am I confused? Did I hear him well? Yes, you did. I just want you to know today that if you are one of those people who have come to that stage of life in your Christian walk, don't be confused. Don't be confused. God knows exactly where you are and he's not confusing you. He has you exactly where you ought to be because he knows exactly where he's taking you. Even though you don't know where he is leading you as we see in the disciples. Now, remember, the disciples were with Jesus. Now, Thomas is saying, no, we don't know where you are going. You said you, we know where you are going. No, we don't know. Look at Jesus in verse 6 of chapter 14, John. Jesus then said to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, <laughs> you see, if you have known me, obviously you were, you were just hanging around me. You don't know me. You don't know me. Sometimes people talk as though they talk about you as though they know you. No, they don't. You don't know me. You may know of me, but you don't know me. Jesus says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and you have seen him. Because I'm talking through him to you. Now it comes to the turn of Philip. Number one, Judas Iscariot. It's been mentioned by Jesus. You're going to be, deny me. You're going to betray me. Then he comes to Peter and says, Peter, you are going to deny me. Now Jesus comforts them because they are, they are confused of the, these two things he has, he has said. He comforts the disciples in verse 1 of chapter 14 to, chap, to verse 4. Chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. He comforts them to bring them down, bring the temperature down. And then he comes to Thomas. Thomas says, we don't know what are you talking about, Jesus. Well, Jesus, deal with Thomas also. Now it comes to Philip. Now it comes to Philip. Now, are you beginning to see the, the atmosphere that Jesus has with the disciples? Hey, pastors, don't worry yourself when you have confusion among your people sometimes because they don't understand you. They, they, they haven't come to the completeness of knowing or understanding the calling of God on your life. So don't get upset with them. 
Are you listening? Don't. Now it comes to the time or to it comes to Philip. Look at what is going on here. Now, Philip said in verse 8, chapter 14 of John. Now Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Just show us the Father. Remember, Jesus is telling T uh, Thomas that because you've seen me, you, we have seen the Father. Now, Philip is saying, what, what, what is this guy talking about? What is this man? What in, in God's name is Jesus talking about? That show, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, Philip is saying, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Because by looking at you, we still don't see the Father. Now listen to Jesus. Jesus said to him in verse 9, Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? Philip? Specifically to Philip. Asking Philip a question. Have I not been with you all this while, Philip, and you still don't know me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Philip, show us the Father? Are you listening to Jesus? Jesus is saying that, Philip, what are you talking about? I am telling you, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Because Jesus says, because you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Philip is saying, Lord, show us the Father and that, that will be sufficient for us. That will be enough. And Jesus is saying, Philip, so you want to tell me that all that I've said to you, that I come in the name of the Father, I don't do anything of myself except what I see the Father do and, I, and or what I, I hear the Father say, the instructions he gave. So I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Me and my Father are one and all that. Are you telling me you don't believe all that? Obviously, you don't believe me, Philip. Now, can you imagine the disciples with Jesus and having this conversation with Jesus back and forth? Jesus is saying one thing, and they are asking Jesus questions from the mind, I mean, from their mouth, out of their heart. That is like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. We hear all that you are saying, but no, Jesus, for real, for real. Show us the Father. Who is the Father? Because all that you are saying that when I see you, listen, let me tell you something. If you don't believe Jesus, if you don't believe Jesus, I don't know what else you can believe. I don't know what else you can believe. Are you listening to me? Jesus continued to speak in verse 10. He says, do you not believe that I am in the Father? And the Father in me? Can you imagine Jesus? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me, thus the works. Believe me. Believe me. Jesus is speaking in verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. If you don't believe what I'm saying, at least believe in the demonstration of my works. What works? Healing the sick, opening the blind eyes, opening the deaf ears, casting out demons, telling Peter to go to the sea, get the first fish that he picks up from the shore, Open the mouth of the sea. Bring the money out. Use that to pay your taxes and pay mine. All these things. I mean, if you don't believe nothing, if you do not believe nothing, raising the dead, bringing Lazarus from the dead, turning the water into wine. If you don't believe all that I've said, at least believe the works that I've done. Literally, it's almost like Jesus is trying to convince the disciples to believe him. Now, have you found yourself in this place? There are a lot of people sitting home these days. It's like, man, I'm tired of church. I've been in church all this while. I don't see nothing. All I see is that the pastor, the preacher is just talking too much just because he needs the money and all those, you know, nonsense sometimes you hear and all that. Let me tell you something. You did not, if you went to the church be believing in the pastor, see, that's where you have missed it. That's where you missed it. Because if the disciples even, if the disciples are even questioning Jesus, then you, have, you are lost by just believing that your life 
is planned by your pastor, then you are lost by putting your faith in the pastor instead of God. Are you listening to me? Remember, he's just a shepherd assigned by God, but your faith must be in God. Amen. Now watch Jesus, verse 12. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Jesus is still talking about where he was going. That the, people, the disciples don't even, almost like they don't believe. It's like, where are you going? They don't even believe Jesus, all that he has said. Watch this, verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandment. And I will pray, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, <laughs> that he may abide with you forever. Were they not believing in Jesus? It's almost that like Jesus have to convince them that you don't believe me. Well, at least believe, even if nothing has believed my works. But anyway, I still have to go. Father will, Father will send you a helper, a helper. Do you believe in Jesus? Look at verse 15. He says, if you love me, if you love me, then keep my commandment. If you love me, do you love him? If you love me, keep my commandment. What commandment is Jesus talking about? The new commandment he gave. In verse 34 of chapter 13, a new commandment I give you, and that is love one another as I have loved you. That is a commandment Jesus gave. Are you loving your neighbor or you are destroying your neighbor? How can you say you are a follower of Christ and all that you do is just tearing one another down. How do you do that? Because if he says, if you love me, keep my commandment. And the commandment he gave is for you to love your neighbor. Love the other person who is also a believer. Love him, love her. If you love him, keep his commandment. Are you keeping the commandment? Or are you doing your own thing? Or you don't believe him? As we see that the disciples were demonstrating that Jesus has been with them all this while, but yet they did not believe what he was saying. Listen, you see, Thomas did not believe it all the way, irrespective of what Jesus said. Because you see, if Thomas had believed, if Thomas, after all that Jesus had said, and he questioned Jesus, and for all those, if Thomas had believed, Thomas would still not ask when he heard that Jesus had resurrected, as he said. He says, I will not believe until I see him, number one, see the, the nail holes in his hands, number two, in his feet, number three, see the sword or the spear on his side, number, number four, let me put my own finger in there, number five, before I can even believe. Do you believe? Do you believe him? Do you believe him? Do you believe him? Do you believe Jesus? Do, this is my question. Do you believe Jesus? Beloved, you cannot believe Jesus. Jesus told the disciples, if you don't even believe my words, then believe my works. Believe what you see me do. And what did they see Jesus do? A slew, a list of them. Healing the sick, casting out demons, opening the blind eyes, raising the, the dead, changing water into wine, on and on and on and on. Jesus says, if you don't believe what I'm saying to you, then believe my works. Believe my works. Because you see, Thomas, as many call him a doubting Thomas. It wasn't just Thomas, I believe, was doubting Jesus. Because Jesus had to go through all these disciples. Are you listening? We don't have much time. I don't have much time. I will get, come back to you another time in a continuation of this. Because we are going to see that the others, other Judas, not Iscariot, had questions for him as well. Beloved, 
You cannot love God without your faith. The Bible says that no one has ever seen God. Today, I challenge you to let your faith come alive. Let your faith come alive in Jesus. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. And if you do, and you have not given your life to him today, let me lead you to him. By just saying after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you. By faith, I believe you. I want you to come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you for hearing me. Forgive me of my sins and let me be a disciple of you. I pray this in faith and in my love for you. Amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer, I want you to believe in your heart that God has heard you. Find a church, a Bible-believing church. As I taking time to break the word of God for you, find a church as such. Get yourself in there. Introduce yourself to the pastor. Get involved in the activities of the church. But most importantly, love one another and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your life will never be the same. Hey, this Reverend Queno, all I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. We believe your life has been blessed. Faith Moment with Reverend Patrick Quenu is brought to you by Patrick Quenu Ministries. For copies of this CD or any other messages, please call. There's a train coming. You don't need no baggage.